The Samurai has always been my favorite type of warrior, thanks to its incredible balance of speed and power in combat. In Elden Ring, we have everything we need to craft a variety of samurai-inspired builds that combine precision, agility, and devastating damage. In this video, I'll be sharing my top 7 samurai builds, each one not only powerful but also incredibly fun to play, all drawing inspiration from the legendary eastern warriors of ancient Japanese culture. First, we have the Eleonora's Pole Blade, probably the most stylish weapon of the entire game. Its unique skill, Blood Blade Dance, can easily perk bleed on any target while dealing a huge huge amount of stance damage incredibly fast. This fantastic twin blade deals physical and fire damage and it scales incredibly good with dexterity and arcane. You can obtain this weapon very early in the base game so you can use it as soon as you wish. With this one we are going to use the Eleonora's Pole Blade on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. We are going to use any weapon with the Raptor of the Mist of War to easily dodge the Radan's Light Explosion attack and the Commander Gaius Charge attack. And if we want to start the fight with the Bleed buffs active you can use any weapon with Seppuku but it is completely optional. And you can include the these two weapons on any other build from this video, but I will not mention it to avoid being repetitive. We are going to be using the Dancer's Armor set that will increase the damage of Bloodblade Dance by a total of 10% if we wear the entire set. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Millicent's Prosthesis, and the Rodent Wings or Insignia. In our Flask of Wonders Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Cracked Tear and the Thorny Cracked Tear, but you can also use the Flame Shrouding Cracked Tear, it's a great alternative. For some reason, this weapon devours stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Thornton Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To get the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 22 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 70 on Dexterity, 33 on Fade and 45 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Howl of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs, but you can replace Howl of Shabriri with Flame Grammy Strength if you don't want to take any extra damage. Just be aware that this body buff is not as good as Howl of Shabriri. And if you want to proc bleed faster, feel free to use the Swarm of Flies. With the amount of Arcane we are using, it's gonna be extremely helpful. As you can see, I have my Scattershy Blessing on the level 2 and to get the max damage possible in the DLC, be sure to have it on the level 20 as well. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Now we have the Rakshasa's Great Katana, an incredible Great Katana from Shadow of the Earth Tree. This weapon deals purely physical damage and it scales primarily with dexterity. Its unique skill with Cutter is a double sweep attack that can be follow up as much as FP and stamina allow you to. This ability was recently buffed so now it's faster and a lot easier to use. In this case we will use the Rakshasa's Great Katana on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. We are going to be rocking the Rakshasa's Armor set that will increase our damage by a total of 8% if we wear the entire set. The most effective talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Axe Talisman, the Two-Handed Sword Talisman and the Spear Talisman. This setup is mostly designed to get the most out of the Charge R2 attacks of this weapon. But if you want to spam the skill, the best you can do is use the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. In our Flask of Wonders Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Spike Crack Tear. Once again, if you want to spam the skill, the best you can do is replace the Spike Crack Tear with the Thorny Crack Tear. With this build, we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic. But if you don't like crafting, feel free to use Flame Grand Me Strength. This weapon consumes a decent amount of stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To get the most out of this weapon, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 25 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 42 on Strength, 80 on Dexterity, and 25 on Faith. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Me Strength are going to be our main buffs. I'm going to be rocking the Scattershy Blessing on the level 20 to get the max damage possible in the DLC. You can never go wrong with the Moonveil, one of the most legendary weapons of this game. Nerfed multiple times but never forgotten. This amazing katana deals physical and magic damage and it scales of Dexterity and Intelligence, a very authentic magic weapon. Tranching Moonlight is like a magic variation of the Unsheed Ash of War. It's the same animation but this unique skill throws two different magic projectiles depending on your inputs. Combining the properties of this weapon with the buff of the Relana's cameo, we have an extremely strong setup here. Now we are going to use the Moonveil on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our buffs and we are going to use the Azur's Glintstone staff to cast our magicka as fast as possible. But as we are using a very high level of dexterity, you can use any other staff. I'm going to be wearing the Spellblade set that will increase the damage of the Transient Moonlight by a total of 8% if we wear the entire set. You can replace this one with the Rakshasa's armor set but I feel like this one goes better with the style of this build. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Relana's Cameo, the Magic Scorpion Charm and the Old Lord's Talisman to increase the duration of our buffs. But you can also use the Roaring Winds or Insignia or the Millicent's Prosthesis. I really like to use the Old Lord's Talisman cause keeping the buffs active is very important to me. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear. But you can also use the Stone Barb Crack Tear to deal additional stance damage if you don't like the HP drain effect of the Blood 
Mods o King Crack Tier. This weapon doesn't consume a lot of stamina, so I will say that the Pickle Torton legs are optional this time, but I always like to use it. To get the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to be running 50 on Vigor, 26 on Mind, 35 on Endurance, 57 on Dexterity and Intelligence, and 33 on Faith. Golden Vow, Hall of Shabriri, and Terra Magica are going to be our main buffs. Once again, I have my Scattergy Blessing on the level 20 to deal the max damage possible on the DLC. One problem that I face constantly when I play with a Samurai build is the lack of range in certain scenarios. Well, for the Nagakiba that is not the case. This weapon is the longest katana of the entire game. And it gets even better because this weapon has a unique piercing R2 that allows you to hit your target at a very decent range. Besides of being an infusible katana which dramatically increases the versatility of this weapon, opening the possibility to create monstrous builds like this one. For this one we are going to use the Nagakiba on plus 25 with the double slash Ash of War on the Kin Affinity and we are going to use the Dry Leaf Seal on plus 25 to get the most out of the Blood Flame buff. It is important to mention that the seal will only increase the fire damage effect. The bleed build up is gonna be the same regardless of the seal you use. But I'm gonna be using this one cause it's going to give me 90 flat fire damage. I'm going to be wearing the white red armor set with the Okina mask merely for aesthetical reasons. However, if you want to deal the max amount of damage possible with this one, you can use the entire Rakshasa's armor set for an 8% damage boost. The most effective talismans for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Fire Scorpion Charm, the Millicent's Prosthesis, and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. In our flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear, but the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear is a great alternative too. For some reason, the double slash of War devours stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Torten Legs to boost your stamina recovery speed. This setup is going to be extremely useful if we use 50 on Vigor, 27 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 99 on Dexterity, and 33 on Faith. Golden Vow, Hall of Shabriri, and Blood Flame Blade are going to be our main buffs. As you can see, I have my Scarlet Blessing on the level 20 to deal the max amount of damage possible to the hardest DLC bosses. I know I said this video was about Samurai characters, but you can negate that Malenia's weapon moves like a katana, feels like a katana, and it's on the katana's weapon class, which means Malenia at certain point has an eastern influence. And the Warful Dance move is something you will only see from the other side of the world. The best part of the Hand of Malenia is that it deals purely physical damage and scales only with dexterity. This makes it really easy to build and use. The only downside of using this katana is that you require a decent awareness of your target's moveset to be able to use the skill of the weapon successfully. With this one, we will use the Hand of Malenia on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. Once again, I'm going to be using the Dancer's Armor set that will increase the damage of the Waterfall Dance by a total of 10% if we wear the entire set. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Millicent's Prosthesis, and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. Both feel free to use any other tier you find useful. With this build, we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boy Aromatic. But if you don't like crafting, feel free to use Flame Grand Strength. It's not gonna be as powerful as Blood Boy Aromatic, but it does the job. And as any other broken weapon, this one devours stamina, so you already know what you have to do. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 26 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 16 on Strength, 99 on Dexterity, 25 on Faith, and 16 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Strength are going to be our main buffs. And as you saw, I'm using 16 on Arcane to be able to use the Swarm of Flies. This spell is gonna be really helpful to proc bleed on those enemies that are extremely resistant to this status effect. Once again, we are going to run the Scarlet Blessing on the level 20 to deal the max amount of damage possible to the toughest DLC bosses. What will be of a samurai list without the iconic Rivers of Blood? The most hated katana in gaming history with no discussion. How a single weapon was able to trigger so much people? It's actually hilarious. For that reason, this fantastic weapon was nerfed multiple times. And I mean a lot of times. Even so, currently it's one of the best weapons you can pick if you want to destroy the game as fast as possible and with that feeling of fast pacing combat. It's definitely my favorite katana and it didn't win the first place just because the last one it doesn't even feature a katana. In this case we are going to use the rivers of blood on plus 10 and then seal we have available to cast our main boss. What a surprise right? We are going to use the Ansbax armor set cause it will increase the damage of the core spiler by a total of 15% if we wear the entire scent. It is actually a fantastic buff for this weapon. The most effective talismans we can use for this build are the shard of alexander, the lord of blood's exultation, the millicent's prosthesis and the rodent windsor insignia. In our flask of wondrous physic we are going to use the blood sucking crack tear and the thorny crack tear. But you can also use the flame shrouding crack tear, it's a great alternative too. And in the same way than the double slash ash of war, the core spiler devours stamina, so be sure to craft some pickle turtle legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 45 on vigor, 22 on mind, 40 on endurance, 80 on dexterity, 33 on faith and 45 on arcane. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs, but 
but you can also use Flame Granny Strength. It's a decent alternative, but it's not as good as Hall of Shabriri. And to proc bleed faster, we are going to use the Swarm of Flies. With 45 on Arcane, it's going to proc bleed extremely fast. Once again, Scattership Blessing on the level 20 to deal the max amount of damage in the DLC. And as the winner of this top, we have the Dual Daginatas, the ultimate destruction machine for Shadow of the Earth Tree and the base game. A few months ago, I would have promised that the most broken build was the Dual Corpse Sword, Twin Blades, or the Dual Bloodstings Fork. Not even close, baby, the best bleed build right now is the Dual Naginatas. It has the fastest DPS at the moment and is not that hard to build. And because we are using a Naginata, I really feel it counts as a Samurai build. Just look at the stylish moveset and that cool design of the Naginata. I'm feeling like Kishin right now, baby. With this last build, we are going to be rocking two cross Naginatas on plus 25 with the Seppuku Ash of War on the Occult Affinity and then easy we have available to cast our main buffs. It doesn't need to be upgraded. With this one, we are going to use three pieces of the Rakshasa's armor set for a 6% damage boost and we are going to combine it with the White Mask that will increase our damage by 10% with each bleed proc. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Twin Blade Talisman, the Lord of Blood's Exputation, the Millicent's Prosthesis, and the Rotting Wings or Insignia. To deal a really good amount of damage, even when facing enemies that are immune to bleed, you can replace the Seppuku Ash of War with Crack Blade and you can replace the White Mask with the regular Rakshasa's Helmet. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Soaking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. Personally, I wouldn't change this build at all because it's the most broken one currently in the game, but feel free to do anything you want. With this build, we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic, but as I always tell you, if you don't like crafting, feel free to use Flame Grand Me Strength. And as you guess, this one devours stamina as well, so be sure to craft some Pickle Torten Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To get the most out of these weapons, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 15 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 16 on Strength, 36 on Dexterity, 25 on Faith, and 90 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Me Strength are going to be our main buffs. And if you want, you can use the Swarm of Flies. In this case, I find it a little bit useless because the build is already the most broken build I've tried in this game, but feel free to do whatever you want. And as you can see, I have my Scattershy Blessing until level 20, and if you want to deal the same amount of damage I'll be dealing to the hardest DLC bosses, be sure to have it on the level 20 as well. Let me know in the comment section what do you think of these builds. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos, and I'll see you in the next one.